Hello, my name is Dr. Paul Clements. And if you're watching this video, it's probably because you have a cat in your life that you're just truly in love with and has been diagnosed with feline leukemia virus, which your veterinarian has probably explained to you and you've searched on the internet that there's not much you can do about that that's going to help. But I'm here to tell you that there may be something you can do that's very affordable and extremely effective. But first, I'd like to show you some information about Cornell Feline Health Center. And when you're looking online, you want to go to Cornell Consultant, two words. So let me just take you over there right now. And here it is. This is called Cornell Consultant. And it's maintained by the Cornell University College of Veterinary Medicine. And when you click on it, you can search by diagnosis by typing in feline and then leukemia and then hitting search and it'll come up. Let me just get this out of the way. Lymphoma feline leukemia virus, FELV, which is the abbreviation for feline leukemia virus. And when you click on it, what's really neat is it gives you a great description, including, you know, the symptoms commonly associated, which is cancer, bone marrow suppression, kidney infections, reproductive problems, arthritis, eye problems, gastrointestinal digestive disease, um, destruction of muscle tissue. So a whole lot of things. And then down below here are all of the symptoms that Cornell Feline Health Center has listed. So now that you have that, I want to tell you that we have a product called Fee Life. Now, I graduated in 1978 from Ohio State University College of Veterinary Medicine. I joined my father in his practice that he started after he graduated from veterinary school at Ohio State in 1945, where he was trained in homeopathy because our traditional medicine currently is called allopathy. That was just getting started at the end of World War II with the discovery of penicillin. So I've been throughout my career looking back through my dad's homeopathy books and that of the practitioner he started working for, for clues as to how Different things were treated for hundreds of years prior to antibiotics and chemical drugs and things like that. And that's where I found a hint for our to make our product called Fee Life. Now, I'm not going to explain that much to you, but there are several tests. There's essentially three tests for feline leukemia. The first one is a test that's running can be run in a veterinarian's office takes 10 to 15 minutes is extremely accurate but it measures the virus in a certain stage of infection so if the test is negative the cat can actually be a false negative the other test that's that can be done is called IFA which looks for antibodies it's immunofluorescent antibody testing now, that depends on there being antibody levels, and that may be falsely negative. In fact, both of these tests in research papers I've viewed can be turned negative after a cat is infected in less than two weeks, both of them. Now, the third test is one that I'm sending out to a laboratory called Microbiological Laboratories. That's run by George Asprey, who has a double major in microbiology and chemistry from Ohio State University. He and I have become friends and we were working on this. And we've come up with a product called Fee Life and I'm going to show you some test results. But he runs a test and the methodology includes something called TAQMAN or TACMAN testing. And to my knowledge, he is the only lab that runs the feline leukemia PCR, which, which is essentially DNA testing for the virus, using the TACMAN technique. 
Um, I've tried to call other laboratories. Their methodology is proprietary and they don't want to let me know what it is. And I have sent samples to microbiological laboratories and to the other big laboratories in this country. Their testing is negative when microbiological is positive. Microbiological laboratory test results follow the clinical signs in the cat. So they start out sick with very high levels, and as they improve, the levels drop. So we're talking about a real life testing here, not research. These are cats living in homes, different homes, eating different foods, different play times, different lifestyles, everything different. The only thing consistent is they all tested positive for feline leukemia and they all got better. So let's take a look here at these test results. Now here is a graph that we made of the different cats we've tested. There's 15 of them here. Now, if you, you can read the numbers, but if you essentially look at what happens, we find that we're testing them. And here's the level where the pro-virus level starts out at. And here you can see that they all went down except for one. Now, this one went back up again, but this cat we could not get a clear answer from the owner as to whether or not they were giving fee life to their cat. And they stopped responding to us, so we could not get, and, and actually the cat is off the formula because they never picked up any more, and they essentially dropped out of the study. But first, this cat went down. This was our first cat, and um, he was amazing because I wanted to euthanize him. He was so sick. But we tried him on the formula, and within two days, he was eating, and the owner said, he's doing great. I had forgotten how annoying he was. And he just continued to improve and to improve, but then they dropped out of the study. Again, don't know. So now I want to go and tell you about my most recent case, and that is Clayton right here. Now, Clayton... The owners were going to call us to euthanize him. And he just, they happened to come in for a nail trim and they were talking to me about Clayton and how he hasn't been eating for weeks, losing weight. All he does is lay around. He doesn't want to move and he just seems to be suffering. So they're going to, she says, I'm going to call you up. I would like to get him in tomorrow and, and euthanize him because we just don't want to see him keep suffering. And I said, I'd like you to try this. Let's test him. Let's get him started on fee life. Let's see what happens. So his first test essentially ran on the middle of November, showed 223,000 copies per milliliter of virus. Now this says FLV or feline leukemia virus provirus. Now there are three things that happen when a cat gets infected. There are three outcomes. The first one is that maybe the cat fights it off and they're immune and resistant the rest of their life. That's called an abortive infection. The second one is a progressive infection where the cat has the virus enter the body through bite wounds or licking or grooming or whatever. And the virus essentially is in the bloodstream for a while and then it spreads to deep into the body, the bone marrow and other places where it takes over the DNA and becomes part of the genetics of the cat. And then it starts making provirus, which can convert to active virus causing illness. Now, if it does convert to active virus causing illness, the cat proceeds to get sicker and sicker and then finally dies from it. That's called a progressive infection. The third op option is that a cat becomes infected. The virus goes deep into the body, becomes part of the DNA or the genome, and the body starts making provirus, but it doesn't convert to virus and cause illness. So that's called a regressive infection. These cats can live for years and years and years, and they may be fighting it off for a a long time, it may start to get active and then maybe they can fight it off for a while. But eventually 
it's thought most of these cats will become sick. So let's take a look here. So Clayton is at 223,000. Now Clayton, 10 years old, was adopted from a shelter and he was tested at that shelter with that in-house test and was negative. He became sick weeks before we sent in this test. On the formula, after the third dose, and it's dosed twice a day, so after the third dose, the owner told us that Clayton was eating and had stopped being so reclusive and was moving around. Now, six weeks later, roughly, we tested Clayton again. 223,000 copies, and now 34,000 copies. So a huge reduction. And just this past weekend, that test was run the end of December, and just, just in the last week, I talked with the owner, and she said that Clayton is continuing to improve. They thought he was old. Now he's starting to play with the toys of their new cat that was adopted from the same shelter, was tested with the in-house test that takes 10 to 15 minutes, and was feline leukemia negative. Molesley, though, is a young kitten, and his level is now 280-some thousand virus. So we've started him on the formula rather than wait for him to get sick. Now, there's been no improvement because he's a regressive infection. He hasn't shown symptoms, but we are going to be testing him here in the next couple of weeks and finding out where his levels are. And I'm sure they're going to be low. Clayton will be tested again, probably in another month or so after this second test. And I'm sure that his level will probably be approaching, if not at zero. So your veterinarian can send a sample to microbiological laboratories. Here's the address. They can call them up, get a price list. It needs to be refrigerated, but the United States Postal Service offers next day mail. Now, if you want to buy Fee Life, please go to our website. It's docclemens.com. So let me just get that up here for you. There, there is our website. So please go there. And I really hope that this will help your cat, your special cat, it's so much better as it has every cat we've treated. Thank you for watching, and I hope you're having a great day. Bye.